Welcome back to Noah's Window. On this Thursday morning, we're still in the book of Romans, chapter 5. And today we're going to pick up in verse 6, where Paul says, When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who's especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. You know, Paul is going to start a section here that's going to close at the end of chapter 8. And what the Holy Spirit has Paul write about is God knows that we would struggle with the idea of grace, at least those of us that are honest about our own sinfulness, because we're constantly going to be looking at our failures and the promises of God, and they just don't seem to connect. Because, you, you know, I remember we were sitting around a campfire one night, and a person asked, you know, it's just kind of a family gathering and friends. And someone asked the question, if you could ask God any question, what would you ask him? And, and I know, you know, typically one would think that it would be something about something that we don't know or understand about God. And I sat there and I thought the question that I would like to ask God that challenges me the most is how could you love me? Mm. Because I know myself, I know my, I know my faults and failures and how I come short in so many ways. And so I believe the Holy Spirit knew that that would be our challenge with grace. Because when the Bible tells us that we are declared innocent in God's sight, that our sins are washed away, we would still be living in a world where we would still fail the Lord and we would still fall. Uh, and so I believe the Holy Spirit knew that when that happened, that we might be prone to doubt. And definitely Satan, of course, will come and exploit that. And so, as I said, this begins a section that's here, and it goes all the way to the end of Romans chapter 8. And so let me go to the end of Romans chapter 8. I mean, I'm not going to read right now, but there's this long section at the end of Romans 8 where the question is asked, what can separate us from the love of God? Mm. And so I think there would be people, <laughs> I guess all of us might have some inclination, to wonder, could we ever do anything? Where God would say, I've, I've, I've loved you enough. I've given you chance after chance after chance, and you just keep failing. It could, could, could it ever come to the place where God would say, I don't love you anymore? And we know tragically in our world that sometimes that happens with people. You know, there are husbands who say to wives, I don't love you anymore. Wives who say to husbands, I don't love you anymore. We've heard tragic stories of parents who said to their children, we don't love you anymore. I mean, that is a broken world and it's, it's there. And I think everybody runs into it. And these Romans who lived in this pagan world, they were very familiar with relationships breaking all the time. And the question might be, well, would there ever be a moment where God would say, because of your behavior, after I saved you, I don't love you anymore. And so what we have here is scripture reminding us that God loved us before we even knew him. God loved us while we were yet sinners. And that's why we love Romans chapter 5, verse 8 so much. And then the verse goes on to say that not even for a good person uh, would most people die. You know, not, not even for a righteous person would somebody die, but God loved us. You know, I memorized everything in King James. God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And so throughout this section, we're going to get more and more information about the love of God, the grace of God, how God saves us. When we get into chapter 6 and 7, we're going to see that, yes, indeed, as Christ followers, we do fail. Even though we're saved, we have this internal battle going on between the flesh and the spirit. But as we see in Romans chapter 8, none of these things, you know, there's this link, there's this long list of all these things that can't separate us from the love of God. You know, there's a difference between being displeased with our conduct and being displeased with us. Yeah. You know, as parents, we are still delighted that our children are our children. We may be very displeased with what they're doing, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, it, and it may it may even affect the relationship some, in some fashion, at least the ability for the closeness to be there. 
but a parent does not kick out the child. Parent, I mean, I'm talking about a, I'm talking about a reasonable right. parent because they're always your child. And God, of course, is the Bible says, you know, it says Jesus said, if you being evil know how to give good gifts, gifts to your children, how much more does your Father in heaven give good gifts or give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? So what we have there is arguing from the lesser to the greater. God is saying, with all of our faults and failures, if we love our children unconditionally, God is perfect. His love is perfect. How much more does He love us unconditionally? I love the fact in Romans 5, 8, the Bible talks about the death of Christ because Christ dying for us is the deciding factor. Mm -hmm. Not our conduct, not our behavior, not our performance. The, the deciding factor was that Jesus Christ died for us. And even while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He loved us. Yes. Wow, that's wonderful. Nothing can ever separate us from the love of God. So we'll get there again. We'll have a long section when we get to Romans chapter 8 that really deals with this at length. But if you've ever questioned God's love for you, go ahead and just cheat and <laughs> go forward to Romans chapter 8. And, and maybe, I don't know, I would go ahead and start in verse 29 and read to the rest of the chapter. It's not very long. But uh, read those verses, and I think it will really speak to your heart that God's love for you will never... Not only never fail, it'll never fade. Right. I love that. His love pursues us and that's for our right. whole life. <laughs> well, that's great. Mary, let's pray for us, please. Yes, let's pray. Oh, Father, we can't begin to say thank you for your great love and for the great love that Jesus demonstrated when he died on the cross. Thank you, Father, that when we were utterly helpless and we were wretched sinners, you died for us so that we could um, become your children and have a future that we can look forward to every single day. I pray that you just encourage our hearts when the evil one comes to discourage us. Father, please encourage our hearts with your great love. I pray that you be with all of our Noah's window family, with their relationships, with their decisions they need to make today, with whatever challenges they're facing. Please watch over and protect them. And I just pray that you would use us as you see fit, and we'll be careful to give you the glory and the honor and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Mary Alice. Thank you for joining us on Noah's window. Now, Friday, of course, Fridays are special at Noah's window. And, and tomorrow's really special. Is it really? It's, it's the one where we have a, an extra guest. Oh, yeah. It's coming on. You're going to love it. It's a little that. long, but it's really good. You don't want to miss it. <laughs> well, it's going to be great. I know Mary Alice and Stephen will be here, and she says someone else will be here, too. So we'll see who that is. But for, in the meantime, hope you have a wonderful Thursday. We'll see you tomorrow. Yes, we love you guys. God bless.